G'day folks, I'm Bren Carter. This is Wine for the People, and it's deep dive time. Today, we are tackling my all-time favorite grape variety. Yes, that's right, I said it. It's not Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Nebbiolo, or Cabernet. It's Fiano. Now, for a quick bit of background, about 10 years ago, my wife and I started a winery in Australia called Unico Zello, and that specializes in Fiano. At times, we've crafted up to seven different types of Fiano, from single sites, stylistic blends, skin contacts, sparkling, and off-dry. It's safe to say we're total Fiano tragics and total nerds about it. But we'll get into Australia and how it's involved in the Fiano story in a bit. But first, let's deep dive. Fiano is a white grape variety that hails from Campania, Italy and it's got some deep history. There's actually some contention around all of this. What we know for sure is that it was referred to in the year 1240 in a document covering the purchases of an Emperor Frederick II, specifically using the name Fiano. Some argue that it gets its name from the town Appia, today known as Lapio, where there's actually a lot of Fiano planted. If that's true, by some stretch, it's implied that Fiano could trace itself even further back into Roman times as the primary grape variety in Appianum. And that's taking things right back to before the Common Era. You know, like when the years start increasing the further you go back. So some believe even that Pliny the Elder was actually referencing Fiano when he wrote about Vitus Appiano. This is entirely my personal opinion here and purely observational, but what I know about Fiano in the vineyard is that the grapes largely tell you when they're ripe by turning the slight colour of honey, usually in response to sun exposure. And it's pretty commonplace in Italian grape varieties where their names have derived from some form of agricultural trigger. For example, Nebbiolo comes from Nebbia, meaning fog. And when the fog comes in, the grapes are almost ripe. Or Pecorino, meaning little sheep. When the sheep start eating the grapes, they're almost ripe. And given that ape means B and apiano means slowly, and I can tell you that it's a mid to late ripening variety and visually when it turns the color of honey, it's typically ripe. Ape, apiano, vitis, apiane, apiano, mapia. Look, I'm just saying, if my fundamentally basic observation happens to be true, there could be some weight in Fiano's lengthy history. And purely for interest sake, that would make Fiano over 1,000 years older than Pinot Noir. Now, as to its more recent history, Phylloxera hit Fiano pretty hard and largely wiped it out entirely. And if you consider the, I guess, the lack of importance of Southern Italian grape varieties in the mid to late 1800s, it's easy to understand how this could happen. It was very much a local wine for locals. And those locals weren't exactly cashed up either. Most of that part of Italy was agricultural and kind of still is today. So Fiano's almost wiped out by Phylloxera in the late 1800s. Then the vineyards and surrounding towns were pretty much obliterated by World War II and all the bombing that took place through there. And only six months after Italy exited the war, in September 1944, Mount Vesuvius erupted, further destroying several towns and vineyards in pyroclastic flows. So at this point, Fiano's down and out. The locals defeated, spirits broken, and that probably should have been the last we ever saw of one of the longest surviving grape varieties in history. That was until the enterprising Antonio Mastro Berardino pioneered the replanting of native grape varieties in and around Campania during the 70s. And today, his namesake winery, Mastro Berardino, crafts some of the most revered examples. Now, Antonio was intrinsic to the establishment of the Fiano di Avellino DOC in 1978, of which was elevated to DOCG in 2003, making it one of Italy's most respected white wines. We're even starting to see further investigation into terroir expression of Fiano in examples specific to outstanding sites such as Fiano di Lapio or Fiano di Paestum, which actually has its own DOC, Cilento. Fiano has found a very comfortable home also in new world regions such as California and across Australia. The move towards more pragmatic, sustainable viticulture, especially surrounding irrigation and water use, has given a lot of Australian winemakers and growers of those grape varieties are pushed towards Fiano. And that has the ability to survive on quite little rainfall, but it's also quite resistant to botrytis given that it's got thick skins. So as of this video, according to Wine Australia, Fiano is currently experiencing one of the highest growth in plantings of all varieties, white or red, in Australia, in our country. It is now the number one planted white grape variety in McLaren Vale. In terms of styles, Fiano exhibits a width and breadth of stylistic variation that would rival the likes of Chenin Blanc and Chardonnay, from full-bodied, oily examples that can handle oak in its stride, 
to lean, mean acid machines that'll survive 30 plus years in the cellar. And it's actually this ageability that has given it the colloquialism, Riesling of the South of Italy. Flavor-wise, leaner examples revel in Granny Smith apple, lemon pith, oyster shell, and gunflint, often showcasing Chablis-esque reduction, and richer examples catapult into another whole world. Basil, pesto, roasted hazelnuts, lime peel, and pineapple. Although what surprises most people when encountering Fiano for the first time is its hallmark waxy texture. It coats the palate, giving a juicy mid to full bodied impression. Now, if you're looking to delve into Fiano, it's a really great time for it as they typically represent really good value. My favorite Avellino producer, ha, is Varia Perti. Raffaella is an insanely talented winemaker crafting examples of Fiano di Avellino that can outlast many German Rieslings in the cellar. And I mean, no kidding, these things go a long way. Check out his Aperti Fiano di Avellino and you won't be disappointed. Now, at the risk of showcasing uh, my shameless self-promotion, our Alluvian Fiano from High Altitude Vineyards here in the Adelaide Hills is a wine that's very close to my heart. Uh, but I do very much respect the work of Alex Sharar what he does in McLaren Vale, he's been crafting Fiano for more than a decade and does some of the best Australian examples I've tasted. I don't have a bottle here, I drank them all myself. Uh, and for those hedonistic wine fanatics out there, the Quinto Decimo Exulte Fiano di Avellino is utterly next level and probably honestly leading the charge in my opinion of world-class Fiano. Um, but look guys, I'll be honest, I could keep going on for hours about Fiano. If you've hung around this far, prove it to me, comment below. Have you tried Fiano before? Did you like it? What did you taste? Remember to like and subscribe. It helps us out a heap and jump on our Discord to chat directly with the most amazing group of wine lovers on the internet. Cheers, folks.